Hi, welcome to Orozco's Lectures. I am Jose Orozco, and these are my lectures. This lecture is a Calculus 2 lecture. I hope you enjoy it. This is 8.3, and 8.3 is trigonometric instruments. So first we're going to discuss integrals involving powers of sine and cosine. So here we go. Given that we have the integral of sine to the m of x times cosine to the n of x dx, well, we have a couple of cases. The first one is that m is odd. So that is the power of sine, right? If, n, if m is odd, then we're gonna split off one sine and write the rest of the integral in terms of cosine. So the rest of the integral terms of cosine. At that point, u is going to be cosine and du is negative sine of x dx. All right, so that's the scenario where m is odd. The second scenario is where n is odd. All right, so if n is odd, well, it's basically the same rule, but for cosine. So we're gonna say split off one cosine and rewrite the rest of the integral in terms of sine. At that point, u is sine of x and du would be cosine of x dx, all right? So basically the same rule here, it just depends on which one is odd. If they're both odd, then it doesn't matter which of these two you choose, all right? Um, either one will work. The third scenario is where they're both even. So M and N are both even. If that's the case, then we're going to rewrite using the power reduction formulas. And that's that sine squared is equal to one minus cosine of two x over two. And cosine squared is one plus cosine of two x over two, all right? <clears throat> and again, if both are odd, it doesn't matter if you choose scenario one or scenario two. And if both are even, we rewrite using um, the power reduction formulas. All right, so let's look at some scenarios. So example A. So let's say that we have the integral of sine cube of x times cosine to the fourth of x dx. All right, so in here, what we're going to start off with is, well, I see that the power of sine is odd, so we need to split one off. So I'm going to say this is equal to the integral of sine square of x times cosine to the fourth of x times sine of x dx. Notice that the one I split off, I put it at the very end, right? The next thing we need to do is rewrite everything in terms of cosine. So sine squared same thing as saying one minus cosine squared, right? And then we still have this cosine to the fourth and this sine of x dx. And we're gonna make u be cosine of x so that du is negative sine of x dx. Notice here that that tells us that negative du would be sine of x dx. So we can easily replace 
this sine of x dx, which is the negative du. All right, so let's see what this integral becomes now. So now if we rewrite it, we end up with the integral of one minus u squared times u to the fourth times a negative du, right? So in there, we could just rewrite this as the negative of the integral of u to the fourth minus u to the sixth du, all right? You could also write that as u to the sixth minus u to the fourth du, right? Or that there was distributed negative. Um, at that point, we would say this becomes u to the seventh over seven, half plus minus u to the fifth over five plus c, giving us our final answer because, well, we know we can't leave this things in terms of u, right? Um, so what we need to do is put it back into terms of x. So this becomes cosine to the seventh of x over seven minus cosine to the fifth of x over five, and then that plus c, all right? So <clears throat> that is the end of that one. So again, to recap this, I split off one of the signs, put it at the very end, and I rewrote the remaining signs, that sign squared, in terms of cosine. All right, and then after that, we did the use of substitution, so on and so forth. So that was A. B. So let's say that we had um, the integral of sine to the fourth of x times cosine to the fifth of x. All right, and here I see that the power of cosine is the one that's odd. So that's the one that I'm going to split off. So this is gonna be now the integral of sine to the fourth of x times cosine to the fourth of x times cosine of x dx. All right, at that point, notice that cosine to the fourth is cosine squared squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as sine to the fourth of x times cosine squared squared. And the reason I want to do that is so that I can rewrite this in terms of sine. So I have the integral of sine to the fourth of x times one minus sine square of x squared times cosine of x dx. All right. And at that point, we're going to say, well, <clears throat> let u be equal to sine of x. Therefore, du would be cosine of x dx. Notice there that we conveniently have that cosine of x dx matching up with just our u, our du, excuse me. So at this point, we're going to say, well, this integral now becomes the integral of, well, sine to the fourth sine was our u. So we have u to the fourth times 1 minus u squared squared, and then that times du, right? What I did there was replace the signs, as well as the cosine x dx with our du. So let's expand this. Let's expand this, uh, uh, this binomial. So what we have here is a to the fourth, not a, u to the fourth times 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth du, which if I distribute that u to the fourth ends up being u to the fourth minus 2u to the sixth plus u to the eighth du, which would give us now u to the fifth over 5 minus 2u to the 6th over 6, plus u to the 9th, wait, hold on, not 2u to the 6th, 2u to the 7th over 7, and then u to the 9th over 9, plus t. But the problem was not about u, we know that. It was about our x over here, right? So in here, I'm going to write this as 
sine to the fifth of x over 5 minus 2 sine to the seventh of x over 7 plus sine to the ninth of x over 9 plus c. And that would be our final answer. Right? Next one. So again, in here, because cosine was odd, right, the power of cosine was odd, that's the one that we split it off. And then we wrote the remaining stuff in terms of sine and did our use substitution. All right, so that is B and C. Let's say that I had the integral of cosine to the fourth of x dx. All right, so in here, Notice that technically there's no power of sine, right? But we can think of that as being sine to the zero. So we can think of there being in here an invisible sine to the zero with of x. And zero is an even number. So because it's an even number, in here we have both powers of sine and cosine being even. So we have to use the power reduction formula. But first, I'm going to rewrite this as the integral of cosine squared of x squared dx, all right? And now I'm gonna rewrite that inside. So what I get now is integral of one plus cosine of two x over two, and that quantity squared dx, right? Because all I'm doing there is I'm using the power reduction formula for cosine squared. From there, we're going to say, well, this becomes the integral of, if I expand the numerator, right, I end up with 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x and all of this over 4 dx. And at that point, I'm going to continue to split this. So I'm going to split this up into three different fractions. Right. So when I split that into three different fractions, I end up with integral of one fourth dx plus the integral of cosine of two x over two. So I'll put that over two on the outside dx, and then that plus the integral of cosine squared of two x over four. But I'll put the over four on the outside. And then that dx. All right. So at that point, at that point, what do we get? Well, in the first part, the integral of one fourth. Well, that's just one fourth x plus. So we have one half times the integral of cosine of two x. That's going to be sine of two x over two plus one quarter. Now in here, let's uh. Well, I'll rewrite the integral for now. Cosine squared of 2x dx. What you'll notice there is that we again have an even power of cosine. Right? So what we can do there is we can actually rewrite that using the power reduction formula. But first, let me remind you of the power reduction formula once again. Because we need to make sure that we use it correctly. And I'm going to write the power reduction formula in terms of theta. So cosine squared of theta is 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. But here notice that our theta is 2x, right? So because our theta is 2x, well, this tells us now that cosine squared of 2x will be 1 plus cosine of 2 times 2x over 2, right? All I did there was replace the theta with the 2x. So that gives me now um, 1 plus cosine of 4x over 2, right? So I'm going to write that up here. So that's our integral of 1. So we have 1 plus cosine of 4x over 2 dx. And now, <clears throat> what do we get? Well, we end up with, we still have this 1 fourth x out here, and then we have a sine of 
2x plus 4 over here, plus this integral is really 1 8 integral of 1 plus cosine of 4x x, right? And then evaluating that integral, we end up with the following. So this first two terms stay the same, right? But now, so I have 1 8 times the integral of 1 with respect to x is just x. Plus, the integral of cosine is sine, but because of that 4x inside there, we have to divide it by 4, and then that plus c. So, let's distribute that 1 8. So, I still have this 1 fourth x plus sine of 2x over 4, plus distributing the 1 8, I end up with x over 8, plus sine of 4x over 32, and then that plus c. All right. Now, at that point, at that point, if we combine like terms, so I have 1 quarter plus 1 eighth, 1 quarter plus 1 eighth is 3 eighths, right? Because 1 quarter is 2 eighths. So I have 3 eighths x plus sine of 2x over 4 plus sine of 4x over 32, and then that plus c. And that will be my final answer. All right. There are ways that we can rewrite these uh, uh, the sine of 2x using double angle formulas, similarly here with the sine of 4x, but this is a good enough final answer. All right. So that's integrals involving powers of sine and cosine. Now let's look at integrals involving powers of secant and tangent. So integrals. Involving powers of secant and tangent. All right. So in here, let's uh, go over what the rules are. So given that we have the integral of secant to the m of x times tangent to the n of x dx. We have a few scenarios, all right? The first scenario is if m is even, all right? So if, so that's the power of secant, right? So if m is even, we're gonna split off um, two secants, two secants, and we write the rest of the integral, so the rest in terms of tangent. At that point, u is going to be tangent of x, and du is going to be secant square of x dx. All right? So that's the first scenario where the power of m is e. Excuse me, the power of secant is even, so m is even. The second scenario is where n is odd. All right, so in here, when n is odd, what we're going to do is we're going to split off one of each. All right, by that I mean one secant, one secant and one tangent, right? <clears throat> then we're going to rewrite everything. So then we write in terms of secant, right? And at that point, once we have everything in terms of secant and we split off one secant and one tangent, we're going to say that u is equal to secant of x, and du would be secant of x tan x dx. All right. So that is the second scenario. Third scenario. 
The third scenario is that we're working with just tangent to the n of x dx and n is even. All right, so in this scenario, we're just working with the power of tangent. So if we have this scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to split off um, two tangents. And we write the split. So we write what you split. terms of secant, right? And that's the only thing you're going to rewrite, just the, just the two that were split off. And at that point, u is going to be tangent of x, and du is going to be secant square of x dx. So that's the third scenario. The fourth scenario. The fourth scenario is if we're working with just a power of secant, right? Secant of m, secant to the m of x dx, and m is odd, right? If that is the case, then we need to use integration by parts. We'll talk about how that works when I do an example. Um, lastly, I'll say here, if all else fails, if all else fails, we write in terms of sine and cosine. All right? And then try and see what happens after that. Okay, so let's do some examples. So, example D. Example D is what well, we've got integral of tangent to the fifth of pi x over 2 times secant to the fourth of pi x over 2 dx. Right? So, that's what we're going to start off with. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do here is I don't like that pi x over 2 in there, so I'm going to do a theta substitution. So I'm going to say let theta be equal to pi x over 2, therefore d theta will be just pi over 2 dx, meaning there that dx is going to be 2 d theta over pi. All right? So now this integral now becomes, well, the integral of tangent to the fifth of theta times secant to the fourth of theta. And instead of dx, I have this 2 over pi t theta. I'm going to put the 2 over pi in the front, and there's the d theta. All right. Now, now I'm going to actually go ahead and do this problem. So, well, let's look at what we have. We have the power of tangent being odd and the power of secant being even. So let's see what we can do. So scenario one was the power of secant is even. Scenario two is the power of tangent is odd. So look at that. It turns out that we can do either one of these. All right. So I'm going to do both, but I'm going to do um, case one first where m is even. All right. Then I'll, I'll redo the problem using the second property there and it's odd, so you see how it, how it looks. So I'm going to start off with m being even first. All right. So we're going to start off with the scenario where secant is even, right? So if you recall, that scenario was we split one off of each, right? I just want to remind you of that. So sorry, we split two off. We split two off. We split two secants off. All right. So that's, that's what we meant. All right, so where secant is even, we split two of them off. So I'm going to rewrite this now as 2 over pi times the integral 
of tangent to the fifth theta times secant squared theta times secant squared theta d theta. So I split off two secant squares, right? At that point, we need to rewrite the rest of the integral. So we split off two, but we need to rewrite the rest of the integral in just terms of tangent. So I have two over pi times integral of tan to the fifth theta times secant squared is the same thing as saying tan squared plus one. So I'm going to rewrite it as tan squared theta plus one. And then we have still the secant squared theta, d theta on the outside. At that point, I'm going to make my u be tan theta. So that du is, well, secant squared theta, d theta. And look at that. Conveniently, we already have a secant squared theta, d theta. Right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to rewrite this integral now as 2 over pi times integral of tangent plus u. So we have u to the fifth times u squared plus 1 times du. And this becomes now 2 over pi times the integral of u to the seventh plus u to the fifth du. Right? And <clears throat> at that point, well, this becomes just 2 over pi times u to the eighth over 8 plus u to the 6 over 6, and then that plus c giving us the final answer here of, because remember, we can't, the problem was not about u. We have to make sure that we don't leave it in terms of u. So we have 2 over pi times, well, what was u? u was tangent. So we have tangent squared theta over 8 plus, not squared, tangent to the 8th. Tangent to the 8th theta over 8, and then tangent to the 6th theta over 6. We have that plus c, but the problem was not about theta either. The problem before it was about theta, it was about pi x over 2. So what we get here now is 2 over pi times um, tangent to the 8th of pi x over 2, all of that over 8, plus tangent to the 6th of pi x over 2 all of that over 6, and then that plus c. All right, that would be our final answer there. All right, so that was using the first scenario, the first rule. Okay, let's do this again using the second rule. So I'm going to call this d star, and it's going to be the same exact thing here. It was integral of 10 to the fifth of pi x over 2 times secant to the fourth of pi x over 2 dx. And I'm going to start the same exact way, that theta be equal to pi x over 2. Therefore, the theta is pi over 2 dx, so that dx is equal to 2 d theta over pi. So I end up now here just like before with 2 over pi of tangent to the fifth theta times secant to the fourth theta d theta. All right. So real quick, let's look at what the rule was going to be. So remember, I'm going to do scenario two. And scenario two was where n is odd, split off one of each. Okay. So n is odd, split off one of each. So in here, this is what we're going to split off one of each of. Okay. So going to rewrite this now as 2 over pi times integral of, we're splitting one off, so we're left with 4. We're splitting one off, so we're left with 3. And then the, the two that we split off, secant theta, let's say secant theta, secant theta, tan theta, So at that point, we are going to 
we write everything here in terms of secant, right? Uh, let me just remind you where it says that over here. And number two, right? So we write everything in terms of secant, all right? So that our u can be secant and our du could be secant tangent. So we're going to say this tan squared is really, I mean, this tan to the fourth is really tan squared squared. We'll have a secant cube theta, put a secant theta, tan theta, u theta. And this tan squared, well, we're trying to rewrite everything in terms of secant. So in here, that's going to be secant squared theta minus 1. And we still have the rest of this. All right. At that point, I'm going to let u be secant so that du is secant theta tan theta d theta and look how convenient that is we have secant theta tan theta d theta that's our du all right so now <clears throat> at this point we're going to rewrite this now as 2 over pi times the integral of u squared minus 1 squared times u cubed, and then the secant theta, tan theta, d theta, that's our du. And then we end up with 2 over pi integral of, I'm going to foil this part out, so that gives me u to the fourth minus 2u squared plus 1, and that's u cubed du. And if I distribute that u cubed to each term in here, I end up with 2 over pi times the integral of u to the seventh minus two u to the fifth plus u to the third du. And now that integral is super simple now, right? What we need to do is integrate that and we end up with, so we have two over pi times. The integral of u to the seventh is u to the eighth over eight. The integral of two u to the fifth is 2u to the 6th over 6th, and the integral of u to the 3rd is u to the 4th over 4, and then we have that plus c. But the problem was not about du. It was about secant. So what we have now is we're going to rewrite all the u's in terms of secant. So I have secant to the 8th of theta over 8 minus secant to the 6th of theta over 3. Notice that I reduced that 2 and 6, and 2 and 3rd, and secant to the 4th of theta over 4, and all of this plus c. But the problem still wasn't about theta, right? It was about x. And theta was, what was it, pi x over 2? Yeah. So what we get now here is 2 over pi times secant to the 8th of pi x over 2 over 8 minus secant to the 6th of pi x over 2 over 3 plus secant to the 4th of pi x over 2 over 4 and all of this plus c. All right. Now, I want you to notice something about our final answer here. This final answer looks nothing like this final answer, but they were both the same problem. So, does that mean that one of them was wrong? Does that mean they're both wrong? No. No, no, no. Neither one of these is incorrect. They're both fully correct, right? They're both fully correct. Um, as far as how are these two the same? Well, there's a whole bunch of trig identities involved here, right? And by a whole bunch, I mean there's one, one trig identity involved. And that's that one plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. That's the one trig identity that's hidden here. Now, as far as how to go from one solution to the other, I will let you figure that one out on your own. It's good practice um, with uh, trig identities and rewriting them. So I will, let the, I will let you do that on your own. But these two answers are definitely the same.
All right, next one. So that was D and D star. So D. Let's say that I had the integral of well from zero to pi over four. Nope, didn't mean pi over four. I meant pi over twelve. From zero to pi over twelve of tangent to the fourth of three x dx. All right. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is, well, I see that 3x, I don't like it, all right? So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a theta substitution where theta is 3x, so that d theta is 3dx, so that dx is d theta over 3. Next thing I need to do here is, well, I'm changing to terms of theta, so I also got to change my bounds because right now my bounds are in terms of x, but I need them in terms of theta. So now. When theta equals zero, but that's not what I meant to say. When x equals zero, then theta is equal to zero, right? Plug in zero into there, three times zero is zero. When x is equal to pi over 12, theta is equal to pi over four, right? Three times pi over 12 is three pi over 12, which reduces to pi over four. So at that point, our integral becomes now the integral from originally 0 still 0, originally pi over 12, now it's pi over 4, and we have this of tangent to the fourth of u, not u, tangent to the fourth of theta, and instead of dx, we've got d theta over 3, so I'm going to put the one third all the way to the front. All right, now. Now, we have tangent to the fourth. Let's look at the rules again. And we had a rule specifically for that, rule three. So it says tangent to the n, and n is even. That's where we're at. It says split off two tangents and write what was split off in terms of secant. Okay. So we're going to split off two tangents. So what we have now is one third integral from zero to pi over four of tan squared theta times tan squared theta d theta and we're going to rewrite one of the what we split off in terms of secant so what we have now is one third integral from zero to pi over four of tan squared theta times secant squared theta minus one d theta all right at that point i'm going to rewrite this all right i'm going to rewrite this now um into terms into into two integrals right so we still have this one third all the way to the front and i'm going to write it as the integral from zero to pi over four of tan squared times secant squared times tan squared theta secant squared theta and we still have the d theta now that minus that's over here so minus the integral from zero to pi over four of just tan squared, tan squared theta, d theta. All right, now, in the first integral, all right, in the first integral, we're gonna say, let u, so in this integral, perhaps in the integral in yellow, let u be equal to tan theta, so that du is equal to secant squared theta d theta, right? And the reason I'm doing that here is because we had secant squared, secant being squared, right? That was before, before when um, the power of secant is even. <clears throat> all right, so now I need to rewrite my bounds, all right? So now when theta is zero, u is, well, tangent of zero is zero. And then when theta is pi over four, <clears throat> u would be tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. All right, so that was that integral. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make the changes in a second. The next integral, well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and rewrite this now. Because the next integral, all we're going to do there is rewrite it in terms of secant. So what do we get now? So this one third stood out front times the integral from originally 0 now it's still zero, and 
than originally pirate 4, now it's 1. Tangent was our u, so I have u squared. du was secant squared theta d theta, so that's just du. Minus that tan squared, I'm going to write it in terms of secant. So that is secant squared theta minus 1 d theta. All right. And I'm going to write that last integral into two integrals again. So I'm going to split it off. So I have the integral from 0 to 1 of u squared du minus the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of secant squared theta d theta plus the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 1 d theta. Notice that I also distributed the negative, right? Negative times the secant squared, negative secant squared. Negative times a negative 1, positive 1, all right? So at that point, we can go ahead and integrate. So we have this one third still all the way to the front. The integral of u squared is u to the third over three, and we're evaluating this from zero to one, minus the integral of secant squared. The integral of secant squared is tangent. So we have tan theta evaluated from zero to pi over four, plus the integral of one is just theta, and this is evaluated from zero to pi over four. And now, <clears throat> What we get is, well, this one third is still all the way in the front. I will color coordinate this. So this one's going to be in yellow, the first one. So what happens when we evaluate this? Well, I end up with 1 cube over 3 minus 0 over 3 minus. Let's see what happens when we evaluate the next part. So I end up with tangent of pi over 4 minus tangent of 0. Okay. And lastly, this last one I end up with, so we have to have this plus sign in the middle. So plus, I also choose another zero. And plug that in there, so I end up with pi over 4 minus 0 when we evaluate that last piece. All right, so now let's go ahead and get rid of the stuff that we don't care about. Zero over three is just zero, so that goes away. Tangent of zero is just zero, so that goes away. And zero is just zero, so that goes away. And at that point, we end up with, well, this one third is still all the way to the front. 1 cubed over 3 is just 1 third minus tangent of pi over 4 is 1 plus pi over 4. Which gives me now, well, 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. So I have 1 third times negative 2 thirds, and that's 3. Negative 2 thirds plus pi over Right? So that's what we end up there with there on that one. Um, all right. So that was D. Right? All right. So now the next one. Actually, I'm going to stop. I don't know. I didn't have, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have the next one prepared. The, the, uh, so here I'm going to do the integral of secant cubed of x dx. Right? If you recall, the rule there, according to what I had written um, above, so let's go up here. The rule, where is it? There it is. So I'm looking at rule 4 here. It says if m is odd, use integration by parts. So let's look at that. We need to use integration by parts here. And just as a reminder, integration by parts was that the integral of u dv is uv minus integral of v du. Right? So that's what we're going to try to set up here. All right. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this secant cube. 
And the way I'm going to write it is I'm going to split off one secant. So I'm going to have secant square root of x times secant of x and x. At that point, I'm going to say, well, let's let u be secant of x. You know, I'm going to rewrite it in a slightly different way. I'm going to put the single power first and the second power. So in here, if I let u be equal to secant of x, then e going to be secant x tan x dx. And remember, I'm doing integration by parts, so that was u. If I let db be secant square root of x dx, then b would just be tangent of x. Right? So let's see what we get here. So the integral now becomes, well, so now we get uv. So secant x times tan x, secant x times x, minus the integral of v times du, which is secant x tan x dx. So notice that I have two tangents there, so I can combine those, right? And what I end up with here is what I have now, this first part is the same, secant x, tan x minus, I'm going to write this as tan square root of x times secant x dx, all right? And the reason I want to write that as tan squared is because I want to put that in terms of secant squared. So what I have now is secant x tan x minus the integral of secant squared x minus 1 times secant of x dx. So at that point, we're going to, I'm going to distribute the secant as well as the negative at the same time and split it off into multiple integrals. So I'm going to have negative integral of secant cube of x dx. And the negative is a negative, it's a positive. Secant times 1 is secant, so the integral secant x dx. Now, let's look at the last integral first, the integral of secant x. So here, I'm just going to copy and paste the first part of this. Copy and paste. Uh, technology. So that last integral, the integral of secant, is ln of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x, and then all of that plus c. But now, notice that I started this problem with secant q. And notice that I ended this problem with still the integral of secant q in there. If you recall, well, what we, what we do now is the idea here is that we have a is equal to b minus a plus c. So we want to bring the a's to the same size. We want to solve for a once we bring them together. So in here, if I bring this negative secant cube to the other side, what I end up with now is that 2 times the integral of secant cube of x dx. And again, it's 2 because this is 1 plus the other one that was already there. Right? So 2 secant cubed x dx will be equal to secant of x tan x plus ln times the ln of the absolute value of secant of x plus tan x and then that plus c. But we didn't do we it, try to figure out what 2 times the integral was. We just want the integral by itself. So we're just going to divide both sides by 2. So I have secant q of x dx is equal to 1 half of, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this again, because technology allows me to be lazy. All right. And close the parentheses right there. And that will be our final answer. All right. Um, 1 half times the quantity of C 
Secondex 10x plus ln of the absolute value of Secondex plus 10x. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So that that actually is the end of section 8.3, at least as far as what I'm going to cover. There are other things that the book covers as far as 8.3 goes, but it's used in integrals involving something called um, uh, products of sine and cosine with different angles. All right, but I would not worry about that. All right, um, as far as I'm concerned, this is what is like what I already covered is what's important. All right, so that is the end of eight. Wasn't that fun? If you think I made a mistake somewhere, you're probably right. Tell me all about it in the comments. If you feel you learned something from me in this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but more importantly, share it. Share this video with your classmates. And remember, you don't have to like math in order to be good at it. But you do have to be good at it. I am Jose Orozco. Goodbye.